how do you create intimacy that isn't just sex? You don't have to do things just because it's normal or because you see that that's what everyone else is doing. In between, we don't really celebrate. And welcome back to my channel. I have a fun video today that I personally love watching. These are some of my favorite videos, especially when I was about to get married. I wanted to do one of these wife talk videos where I just answer a lot of different questions about being married, what it's like, kind of more TMI questions. I watched a lot of these videos from Milena Ciciati, Sarah Therese, I'm trying to think who else. My friend Mikkel did a few of these videos too. They're just some of my favorites and I obviously don't know everything. I've only been married for a bit over a year now, so not very long. I kind of like doing these to look back on because obviously things change over the years and you learn and grow a lot. And so in this stage of life that I'm in right now, I just kind of wanted to answer some questions that you guys gave. I just asked for some on Instagram. My Instagram is just at Michelle Reed if you want to follow me there. I've been posting quite a bit on Instagram, especially on my stories, but I just asked for some questions on there from you guys and you guys asked a lot. I just wanted this to be a really casual video, so I got my iced coffee here and the lighting's not perfect because it's partly cloudy and not everything is in tip-top shape but I think that makes it more casual and just comfy so I hope you guys enjoy we'll just start off the bat with this one that says how do you create intimacy that isn't just sex and I think this is a really good question and one that I think that that's kind of like an expectation versus reality that a lot of people have and that that's like the main way that you connect which it definitely is a very important way of connecting and is something that is helpful to feel intimate within your relationship but I definitely think that it's important to have other ways of being intimate and I think this really does depend on your love language Everyone has much different love languages and the way that you might feel loved is so much different than the way that your spouse feels loved And so for me physical touch is my main form of love language But I still think that that has other forms of intimacy beyond just sex So I really like being randomly hugged when he goes to grab my ham when we're out and about like those are things that I really love and makes me feel really loved I also love acts of service like when I wake up in the morning and he pours me a nice coffee like the really small things I do think especially in a marriage are so important because it is easy to get used to living together and get used to just being around each other that you forget to kind of go out of your way to serve the other person you know in both ways not just one spouse doing it for the other I think doing new things together that's always been something that we really loved in dating was just like experiencing new things and going out of our way to form new hobbies together and I think that's one form of intimacy that's so fun it can be a really good bonding experience for the two of you guys so I think just finding new things and never just getting tired of the same old same old this one's funny it says how do you figure out your bathroom schedules in a one-bedroom apartment so I was actually watching my friend Chad and Tori Masters who you guys probably know on YouTube they do a lot of like Christian based content they're super sweet but they were talking about how like one person will go use the bathroom upstairs and one person will use it downstairs I know a lot of people use the bathroom with the door open within their relationship like they don't really care I feel like for us it's not that big of a deal I think it depends on the situation that's happening if you catch my drift sorry I think my voice just cracked but it's definitely not something where we have like a schedule I mean we like we'll use the bathroom at the same time if one of us is showering or something I think that's kind of like the beauty of living with someone you do get to share everything and yeah it just depends on you if that's something that's really important for you if you want to keep certain aspects of that private then I think you can discuss that and figure that out but yeah it really isn't that big of a deal within a one-bedroom apartment yeah I don't know I just don't get that embarrassed and I think part of that is because I grew up with brothers so I'm just used to like that kind of thing and I don't know I'm a very like comfortable person I get comfortable around people pretty easily which I think people might not assume but yeah I think if that's something that is important for you to keep separate and you want to have your alone time in that area you can schedule that what are some things you do to keep your marriage a priority while also having busy schedules I think this is a great one especially because going into September I just think schedules get really crazy and Thankfully, we're in a situation where I have a very flexible job where I am not working like these crazy hours. Similarly with him, while he works a nine to five, he is not working like 80 hours a week. We're not in grad school or anything, so that's not happening. And so I think going back to the first one, scheduling dates is so important and it can seem stupid when you're living together and you think, oh my gosh, I'm spending all this time together. But a lot of times sitting on the couch, scrolling on your phone is not quality time and you realize that that's 
not actually making you feel closer to your spouse. And so scheduling that time where you're off your phone, you're just enjoying one another's company and remembering to ask each other questions. I think it's easy to get caught in this mindset where you assume that you know everything about them because obviously you're married to them, you've been living together, but there are still so many new things to learn. I think that's something that I'm remembering is just always to be curious. And that's a way that I want to be with life in general, just always curious, having kind of like that childlike faith about life and just wanting to go out there and learn more. And I think within your relationship, that's something that's really special to do. I talk about this all the time, but we have this journal, it's the marriage journal, and we still do it weekly. We've done it for a year and it has little check-ins that you can do. You can ask each other questions. And I think that that's such a helpful resource to use if you're trying to get to know your spouse better or also just be more intimate and prioritize each other even when things are really crazy. And so I'll have that link down below. I think that's a great gift if you know of someone getting married or if you're just wanting to kind of start that aspect of your relationship, you can start it whenever. Like you can start it if you're two years into marriage, three years, five years. I just think it's a great resource and it's one that I think helps us a lot. Do you find it harder to maintain friendships with non-married friends either from before or after? So I would say no. I think I've always been the person, and you guys know this, that has like a few close friends rather than a large friend group. And so I feel like, I mean, maybe my friends think differently but I think for the most part I do try to prioritize those friendships a lot yeah I would say yes I think it has been important though within our relationship to also find couple friends it's really fun to hang out with people who are in a similar life stage who you feel like you can relate on with a lot of things and so we're really blessed we've met just recently I think a lot of really great couple friends so I'd highly recommend if you're in a marriage it's just really comforting and it's good where you can encourage each other within your marriage and know that you guys are are relating on things and it's just fun hanging out with other couples like it's fun within your marriage to switch things up this one's funny but it says having any more baby fever recently so it's funny because either being around other babies makes me want to have kids or it does the opposite like seeing just how you know much of a responsibility it is makes me realize oh wait maybe i'm not ready for that but no i definitely think within the next few years i think we'll both definitely be ready for kids by then but right now i think that it's just not in the works for the next bit especially financially we just don't know with our like home situation if we want to have a house i know i've been dragging you guys along with this house thing saying i want to have a house but then I don't want to have a house. It's just been really crazy. And I just think there's a lot going on. But then again, I think there's never like a perfect time to have kids. I don't know. I wouldn't say any more or less than it has been. I know I made that video talking about baby fever, but I like being an aunt because I get to hold all the babies and see them, but not necessarily have all the responsibilities of it yet. I also just think it's nice right now getting to really enjoy one another. I mean, especially because we waited to live together. And I still think that that aspect of our relationship is still so new and still so fun and exciting. I feel like the lighting just got really crazy all of a sudden. So yeah, I think we're just taking our time. I think there is a lot of pressure like right when you get married to just feel like you have to have kids right now or you have to by the certain age. But I think in your 20s, everyone is just at such a different life stage. And I think kids are just such a joy to have in your life. And so I just wanna make sure it's the right time for us. But then again, you never really know when it's the exact right time. So. This one's also funny. It says, was it hard to transition from um, never having sex to married with lots of it. I like how she just said lots of it. Oh my gosh, again with the lighting. I would say no. I don't think it was like a weird thing. And I know this was another question about when people wait till marriage and then they're married and they experience just a lot of difficulty within that aspect of their relationship. And I definitely think that that can happen for some people. But I think that's why it's important just to communicate about it. I think this is something within our relationship that I've always been really adamant about is just always talking through things, talking through things when they're uncomfortable, when you seem like you might be crazy for thinking the things that you're thinking. And I think especially within the intimacy aspect of your relationship, talking through that stuff is so valuable and important and healthy to do within your marriage because you want to enjoy that. While I don't think that we should idolize it and make it like on this pedestal where it's just the end all be all because it's not, you know, it is a good thing and you do want to enjoy it. I think talking about it is so important if that's something that you deal with. I guess I never 
never grew up seeing that as like a bad thing. It was a personal decision for me wanting to wait. And I think that's why I have that relationship with it. I actually talked about this in a recent podcast episode, a lot about like purity culture and that kind of thing. If that's something you wanna to listen to, if you wanna hear more about it, I'll have it down below. This one says tips on dealing with a cold mother-in-law who believes that nobody deserves her son. Oh that's so hard again i think talking about it with your spouse is so important talking about it i think there's this phrase that says blood confronts blood and i think that's really important if you're dealing with any issues with your in-laws or your spouse's in-laws to actually talk about it and have that spouse confront their family with blood confronts blood because at the end of the day it is up to them to stick up for you and you know support you and you are a family now you are your own unit and it's really important to make sure that you are defending your unit and being there for your unit but that's so hard i can't imagine having like you know a mother-in-law or a father-in-law who does think that way about you um, if you recently got married, I would say it might just be a hard transition for them feeling like now they're not like the center of his world and that can be a lot for them to go through. And so try to approach it with as much, you know, grace. I'm a Christian, so it's hard because I know not everyone who watches these videos shares the same faith, but for me, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of God to change people's thoughts and to, you know, soften their hearts. And so I think that prayer is so important too, if that's something that you believe in, but yeah, communicate with it I know that's really hard I know it makes it really uncomfortable because you want to be really close with the other person's family they have your best interests at heart and it's just such a nice thing when you do get along with their family I would have your spouse talk to them and try to see why they're acting the way that they're acting um, but also know that that says a lot more about them than it does you it's not a reflection of you it's probably just them dealing with something that they haven't properly dealt with yet did you ever worry about being sad after the wedding due to not have anything big to plan so yeah i think that this is something that i really don't like it's so fun to plan a wedding and to put together all the pieces but it is kind of that thing where you put all this hype on one day and then it's just gone and you kind of feel like my friend Carissa I just actually went to her wedding but she talked a lot about this how we really do celebrate people when they have kids or when they're married or they have like these big life changes happen but the in-between we don't really celebrate and so I think it's easy to think okay like I'm married now there's not really much else to look forward to and I think this is why I talk a lot about just the simple small joys of the day and i think for me with being married now there are so many aspects of our marriage that i looked forward to and so giving myself permission to enjoy those things there are just so many things that you can smile about that are just as big as the wedding and also to know that that's not like your last party you have to plan you can have another party you can have people over and there's always something to celebrate and i think when life is crazy and there's so much going on with the world i really do believe that it's important to celebrate those small things because they do make life worth living i think for me as a youtuber there's a different perspective where i do think that there's a lot of hype around a wedding and you know it's all good for the content and people were so excited and then it happens and then you kind of feel like people are just waiting for the next big thing waiting for the next exciting thing and that's why i'm so thankful for the people who stick along for the in-between when there's not you know something that may be considered super exciting which is great to celebrate like i just want to say it's great that we're celebrating that it's nice to celebrate people for their in-between wins too that are just small wins i don't know if that made sense but i've been thinking about this a lot because i've been following my friend carissa and she's always talking about it this one says the biblical notion that a wife serves a husband outdated to you or your thoughts so i think this is interesting because i think i got a lot of things about this like what do you think about you know this idea of serving your husband i think it's funny because for me i think of it very much as serving one another and when i read the bible like that is what i think about is serving one another i mean my dad did our ceremony and he talked a lot about the principle of mutual submission marriage is about mutual submission michelle aiden as you both embrace mutual submission I promise you, you will have a fulfilling marriage. And I think that there are ways that I serve him and that he serves me and that may vary from day to day. I think that's just like being a good spouse to one another. I don't think that you should hold your spouse on a pedestal and like see them as your God because you'll never be fulfilled. They're imperfect. They're never going to be completely perfect. But I think it is a lot about dying to yourself and being there for one another. And I have found that I am much more fulfilled when I'm going out of my way. And this is just a principle in general with like people in general, not just your spouse, not just doing what's gonna make me happy in that moment, but doing what's gonna make other people happy and going out of my way to serve other people 
And I think within a relationship, it's important to do that, you know, in both ways. And I think within a marriage, you do that to one another. And so do you always feel like you have to get it all put together since living with Aiden? I think this is funny because the answer couldn't be farther from this. The only way I kind of feel pressure to have it all together is because of YouTube and because I vlog and I want to kind of like share our home and share our life. But I also try to keep it pretty raw on here so you guys know not everything is perfect. I think within a marriage, having all of these crazy expectations can actually be so bad because going back to before, if you're expecting this person to fulfill you in all ways, if you're expecting them to bring you joy and bring you happiness and make you feel more secure, like yes, they can help in those ways, but they're not your God. Like they're not going to be the God of your life. And so I think that I have a lot more expectations on myself than my husband has on me. I think that you guys see a lot of me like keeping our house together and cooking. And I just think it's so funny because people think that that's like things that he kind of expects of me. That could not be farther from reality. He couldn't care less. I mean, he appreciates the meals I make. He appreciates the way I set up the house, but he does not expect that at all that's not an expectation of his it's more just something that i like to do i feel really fulfilled by keeping our home together and that's why i'm the one who does a lot of that stuff that i show on my vlogs it's because i like it he's perfectly capable of doing it and he's also really content with eating frozen food i just really enjoy cooking i really enjoy putting together our house and then he does a lot of things that i obviously don't show i don't show a lot of the things that he does on here and that's just because of me and you guys know that i think if anything i feel a lot less pressure that way i don't feel like i have to have it all together because i know that he loves me and that's not an excuse to just kind of be like a worse version of myself i feel very secure within our relationship i know that we have that covenant and i know he's not just going to get up and leave when things are hard because we have made those vows to one another and it's something that i really appreciate so much and i'm just really thankful for because i do find a lot of security in that but with that being said that's why i don't feel like I have to have it all together. Is buying expensive lingerie worth it? I haven't had to buy any before, LOL. Well, I don't think you need to buy expensive stuff. I think it just depends on you and what you feel comfortable in. I think that it can be like a really fun thing. I just love like cute pajamas and stuff like that. And so I have never spent like a crazy amount of money, but I know like Adore Me has a lot of really cute stuff. I have liked a lot of stuff on Etsy too. I think that Etsy has really cute, just like minimal pieces that are really nice. And so I don't, don't think it's really worth it honestly i mean it's not something that you're practically wearing all the time but i think if it's something that you really want to spend your money on i think it can be worth it i just think it's something fun so i like it but i don't think i would personally spend like too much money on lingerie i can't remember if i've talked about this one in a video but a lot of people asked about splitting up chores so i kind of just talked about things that I like to do, but I think it depends. I don't think things have to be 50-50 if you don't want them to be 50-50. I think if one person is like realistically working out of the house a lot more, I think that's the situation for us. I'm home a lot and I do a lot of our chores that I share my content, so that's a big reason why I do a lot of them. We talked a lot about this in premarital counseling and you don't have to do things just because it's normal or because you see that that's what everyone else is doing. Um, just do what works for you. I mean, we kind of like said the things that we like to do and then try to pick from there. And obviously you don't like all the chores that you have to do. So we would do things that we didn't like to do too. I would just talk about it beforehand. You can also talk about it after you get married too, but I think it's helpful to know before. I do a lot of like our cleaning. He takes care of our cars, finances, like I said, like that. So I think just talking about it before and figuring out what each other likes. Does it feel like you're as independent when married? I'm pretty independent, but I want marriage. Depends on how you view marriage. I just think there are a lot of different views on it. There are people who think that it's, you know, primarily just a contract. It's a very contractual thing. It's got good tax benefits. And if that's for you, then yeah, that's like what you think. But I think for us, and like as a Christian, I think that our view of marriage is just a lot different. I believe our marriage is a mirror of, you know, the relationship that I have with Christ. And I really do believe that it's, you know, God, 
me and my husband and that's how I view it. And so I think it just depends. I think that having a healthy dependence on another person in marriage is a good thing. And I think that it's brought me a lot of joy living that way. And with that being said, I've also talked a lot about being a really independent person. And I think it's good to have hobbies that you just enjoy. I think it's good to have things that you like, you know, on your own and not finding your identity in someone else. I think that's really important. Like my YouTube channel is primarily focused on me because I see this as a job for one, but also a hobby. It's something that I really enjoy. I really enjoy creating content on here. And it's kind of my outlet that I do throughout the day. I think spiritually finding my identity in Christ and not just finding it all in myself and my marriage. Like that's something that's so good. So I think it just depends on how you look at it. I think that you don't have to be this person who's like fully codependent in an unhealthy way, but I do think having a healthy dependence is also good. I guess I just always grew up with a very healthy view of the way that my parents were married and their marriage and seeing how my dad had his own things that he really liked and my mom had her own things, but they were still very much a team and relied on each other in a way that I think is really healthy. And so I'm very thankful that I grew up with that. I know not everyone has like that view to grow up with. And obviously they had things that they had to work on and they had flaws, but it was nice growing up with that image because I think it helped me within our marriage now. Okay, this one says, dealing with different libidos within marriage. I, I think this is a good question because this is also a thing that my friend Tori Masters talked about. I remember this is like the first time we went out to dinner with them and I remember that we were just talking about things within marriage, like expectations. And I remember she was talking about how she always used intimacy as kind of like a barometer of where they were in their relationship. And if it was happening all the time, then things are really good. And if it's not happening a lot, things are really bad and she kind of had to change that mindset and I think that's so true that doesn't dictate the spot that you're at within your relationship and things are going to change throughout time like I still think it should be something that is a priority because again I think it is something that's important and it is really good for your relationship but it doesn't mean that things are better or worse when they're happening I mean sometimes it's so hard because it's like yeah sometimes maybe but I don't think that that should be. I think that you can feel, again, really intimate with your spouse in ways beyond just sex. So I think, again, talking about it, making sure that you know what's on their mind, making sure you know if it's at a place where the other person wants it to be, making that aware and just talking about it because I think realistically, stress is something that can really affect that aspect of your relationship. I know that's like the last thing that I'm feeling when I feel stressed or like depressed if I feel really... Um, anxious that can be really helpful but it also can just put me in this bad mindset where it's not the thing that I want to be doing and maybe I would feel more intimate if I was actually talking through those emotions so I've just learned that it's important again to just talk about it and make sure it's known and then you can just adjust where it needs to be beyond that I think I answered quite a few questions so let me know if you enjoyed this I'm trying to talk about these topics more because I think as I get older and as I grow on YouTube I really want to kind of talk about different things that I maybe was too scared to talk about before or I just know a lot of people are thinking and no one's talking about so I again I'm always just so thankful for you guys for watching these videos it means the world to me and I never take you guys for granted like I promise from the bottom of my heart I'm so thankful for you guys and so I will see you guys in my next video bye friends <laughs>